It's our purpose to bring to bear the principle of common sense and rational discussion to the issues of our day. America was created at a time of great turmoil, tremendous disagreements, anger, hatred. It was a book written in 1776 that guided much of the discipline of thinking that brought to us the discovery of our freedoms, of our God-given freedoms. It was Thomas Paine's Common Sense, written in 1776, one of the first American bestsellers, in which Thomas Paine explained by rational principles the reason why these small colonies felt the necessity to separate from the gigantic Kingdom of England and the King of England. He explained their inherent desire for liberty, freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and he explained it in ways that were understandable to the people, to all the people, not just to the educated upper class. Because the desire for freedom is classless. The desire for freedom adheres in the human mind and in the human soul. Today we face another time of turmoil, of anger, and very, very serious partisan division. This is exactly the time we should consult our history. Look at what we've done best in the past and see if we can't use some of that to help us now. We understand that they created the greatest country in the history of the world, the greatest democracy, country that has taken more people out of poverty than any other country on earth. They weren't perfect men and women, neither are we. But a great deal of the reason for America's constant ability to self-improve is because we're able to reason, we're able to talk, we're able to analyze. We are able to apply our God-given common sense. So let's do it. Welcome to another episode of Rudy Giuliani, Common Sense. Today, we have a very distinguished guest. He's someone that I served with uh, for eight years in city government. And uh, since then, he's done many, many things. Uh, but probably the one most relevant to today's conversation is he now runs the Langone. NYU Langone Medical Center. The NYU Langone Medical Center. Uh, it's Joe Loda. Just to tell you a little about Joe, Joe's background is in the financial world, mm -hmm. uh, but then when he came to City, City Hall, he held just about every, every job, <laughs> including being the head of uh, the budget, which I always thought was the most difficult job in the city, uh, deputy mayor for economic development, and then of course the first deputy mayor, the deputy mayor for operations. And in that position, he had experience very relevant to what we're gonna talk about today, coronavirus. He had to handle the outbreak of West Nile virus, the first one ever right. uh, in, the in the United States, States, which CDC disputed with us mm -hmm. for, for a, a whole month. For a whole month, right. And then, of course, uh, you'll remember September 11, 2001. He was the deputy mayor then. He was in charge of operations in the city. He was one of the key people that kept this city together, worked day and night. And one of the things he had to deal with, of the many, many things, was anthrax. So Joe brings to uh, what he's going to have to deal with now in the hospital, mm -hmm. he brings with it a great deal of, of experience. And I just wanted to get his perspective on what's, on what's going on, how bad this is, how a great hospital like NYU is going to deal with it. Uh, first thing I thought I would do, Joe, is show everybody a picture of this uh, enemy, which is the coronavirus. It's... <laughs> It's almost, it's almost like a painting, right? mm -hmm. like a yep. painting, but it's a, um, it's a piece of genetic material. This is the crown, the corona. And that's why, it, that's yep. why it's called coronavirus. The mm -hmm. Latin word for crown is corona. Right. And these are the things that go stick into the cells mm -hmm. and uh, drive, in the, drive in the virus. And this, this is not un unusual, mm -hmm. uh, SARS and MIR. Well, corona vir Absolutely. viruses. Right. They were originally called coronaviruses. But when you look at this, and that, that was like 2000 and 2000 and maybe, maybe 2012 or something like that, this, the n numbers here are so much greater. Right. There we were talking about 8,000, 10,000. Uh, I think Mir was less than 1,000 deaths. 
We already are way, 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 way over high. that. What are, the, what are the most current, you, you had them a minute ago, what are the most current numbers? Well, the, the current numbers, and I'll, I'll get them up, and you had them as well uh, a second ago, uh, the numbers right now worldwide, there are over 90,000 cases uh, that o have happened. Over 90,000 cases? Over 90,000 cases, there are over 3,000 deaths. In, in this country alone, we've had, uh, you know, today, uh, it's uh, the second day of, of March, uh, and in the United States, uh, we have 99 cases, and we already have had uh, six deaths. Uh, and, we, and we've had a, a case announced in New York. And we have one case in New York, in and Florida. I think we're about to have a second one shortly in New York. The, we understand the husband of the, uh, the first case, uh, he's relatively close to being announced. So when you look at the numbers with these other uh, viruses, and you look at um, the numbers were so much smaller, mm -hmm. Why is this spreading? Why is this spreading so fast? It's already well, it's already in just about I'm not going to say every country in the world, but almost every this, country. This in the world. virus is very very similar <laughs> to the to the common flu, the virus that's part of the common flu. It spread through a cough. It spread through uh, you know coughing and sneezing, uh, and and it humans do that, and um, and that's why that's why it's getting passed around so quickly and so easily, as opposed to. MERS and SARS, which was not passed around that way, and you remember West Nile was passed around by being bit by a mosquito. Right. Uh, not as frequently uh, as you would have as a human being coughing. Right. Which is why the number one recommendation is if you cough, if you sneeze, cover your mouth, you know, in any way you possibly can. Wash your hands all the time. Keep washing your hands. And don't touch, uh, don't touch your face uh, and don't touch your eyes. Well, because one of the things you can become infected with is through your eyes. If your hands are, you know, have any kind of uh, the virus on it, you can touch your eyes and you can get infected that way, which is why medical workers are wearing shields. And what about the wearing of masks? You, you see people increasingly wearing masks, although there seems to be real doubt as to whether that does any good. It does no good. <laughs> it, the masks are made for people uh, who are sick to prevent their germs from passing along to someone who... Uh, is uh, not sick, and anybody who's not sick wearing a mask, it's just a waste of a mask, and the, the mask should be used for people who really need them. So the basic, we might as well do that right away. We, right. Joe was, a, was an expert at doing this uh, all during West Nile virus and right. anthrax. He would go on television, <laughs> usually two, three times a day, and warn people about what to do, what not to do. Um, so what are the, 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 main, the main things are, to wash your hands as, as, as often as you can. Wash your hands as often as you can. At, for about 30, 40 seconds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, 30 to 40 seconds. Wash your hands, spend a little bit more time than you normally would. Um, always wash your hands, and actually wash, you know, even wash your hands when you don't even think you need to. I think right. it's really important to, to continually wash your hands. So you're, you're starting used to, to be see. a sign of guilt, you know, like Pontius Pilate, remember? I, I do hand. remember wash your hands, and, and uh, some religions that really people want to wash their hands even before they eat. I encourage people to wash your hands as frequently as possible. Um, and you remember as an altar boy, you used to wash your hands oh, before, you know, all that. Lavabo. Lavabo, that's exactly, more Latin. And, and yeah. So, so um, um, that's really important. Um, you know, you should eat, should eat cooked meat. You should cook the meat as, free, you know, as, as well as you possibly can. Meaning you shouldn't have, you should order uh, uh, what? The steak tartare. Me medium or well done? You should at least cook, you know. But no, no a steak tartare. And, uh, in America, it's for, probably okay, but for, in, for you know, a while. but in other parts of the world, it's a, it is very So you have to watch what you eat. Yep. And... I think the hardest thing for people will be touching their eyes because That's right. you don't think about it. I mean, we probably touch our eyes 10, 20 times a day. In one I way sit or another. in meetings. I sit in meetings. I'm going to touch my face right now. And the, the number of times you see people do this. Right. They're automatically touching their face. They're close to their mouth and all of that. It is, it is problematic. They don't realize. So if you, if, you, if you feel the necessity to touch your face, go wash your hands first. Right. Or just remember, put your hands somewhere else. Yeah, put a pen in that's there. Gonna very, that's going to be very. That's that's a is. difficult thing to do. It's a, it's a habit. You, we are seeing, and you're seeing this at conferences. And those conferences that are happening, they're starting to put up signs. You know, avoid shaking hands, uh, fist bumps. Uh, I just are I just had some guests here, right. and I put out my hand, and he said, "No, we're going right. to right fist bumps or gonna, elbows and things like bump. that." Right. It's so there there may be something to the Japanese bowing. Uh, as opposed to uh, shaking hands. To that. Well, that's what that's going to be the new thing now. It's going to become you bow a little bit. 
curtsy and you right. Know. <laughs> so it's hard to put this in perspective because, in many ways, it it, it um, it's going to affect many many people. Right. Uh, you can you can see already that there are going to be a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. Uh, something like 45,000 people have already recovered. Correct, and most, and absolutely, 90, almost 99% of people will recover. I mean, right now, you know, a couple of weeks ago, they were saying the mortality rate was 2%. It's now down to 1.4%, and most medical professionals will tell you it'll probably go below 1% by the time all is said and done. Most, that means 99% of everybody who gets this will be fine. And if you look at the number of people who have passed away, uh, they have had comorbidities. They've already had existing illnesses, and they are older. This is not. This is a unique virus. It's not affecting young people. It's not affecting children. It's uh, when people in, in uh, middle, you know, uh, in the 30s, 40s are getting it. Right. Uh, it's not very severe. But for those who smoke, for those who have respiratory problems, for those any kind of lung-related uh, issues, it is severe. The folks out in Washington State and the old folks home, they, were, they, they had some severe medical issues. And COPD and things like that, that becomes a problem. Because your immune system is, an, is, an, it, is compromised. It, it com isn't absolutely strong, compromised. And, and it's your immune system that fights the virus. That's exactly right. And there really is no, me med there's no medicine for this. There, there's no medicine for any, pretty much for, for all for, viruses. For, right. Right. And in this case, as of now, there's no vaccine, and there's work on vaccines. They're working done. on vaccines. They think there'll be a vaccine at, at least a year from now, maybe longer. We're working on vaccines right now. The scientists at NYU, the scientists all over the country are rushing uh, to do certain things, both in the academic medical center world as well as in the private sector. Uh, to come up with a vaccine. You know, we've, we've created vaccines for polio. We've created vaccines for uh, all different types of uh, 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 viruses over time. And, you know, viruses, you know, we've had viruses for quite a long period of time. You know, we were talking earlier, there's been polio, um, there's AIDS. Well, a lot, a lot of things that people have uh, been frightened of, and they don't realize that it's a virus. Right. Like I, I, I'm not sure a lot of people remember that polio was a virus. That's right. Or HIV. AIDS, vi it's virus. absolutely a virus. There are lots of viruses, and and initially, there you know, it, you, there's no antibiotic for a virus. Antibiotics are only for bacteria. Right. right. And so a virus is a it's an organism that it it can kill, and and so as humans, uh, we just have to be prepared. And cleanliness is the most important part of it. Now, what but whatever happens with this, and let's hope it's not as bad as people think, but be ready for it. Uh, we're going to lose a lot more people to influenza this year the the regular common have. flu we have already lost a lot of people the common flu year in and year out uh is it, it is much worse it it is rampant uh, the it nothing nothing concerns me more than the number of people who say their children and themselves they should not get inoculated flu shots uh are the easiest thing in the world to get you can get them in the local you can get them in your local sure. drugstore yeah. Everybody should get a flu shot. Uh, it is the easiest thing in the world to do, and it will save your life. No well, question. Well, through February, 1,210 people died in the United States of influenza. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a lot of that's people. That's a lot of people. And it goes that way, it's going to be 12,000, 14,000 by the, by the end of the year, just in the United States. Just in the United States. And the numbers are similar, maybe and, worse, and, throughout and, the world. And influenza does have a huge impact on children and infants. Their, their immune system cannot deal with the common flu. It, right. And there, this past year, the B flu, which is what, what is most dominant, uh, has caused some children this year to become blind. They'll live, but they're blind. I mean, it's a, it's a horrible disease. Uh, and it's unfortunate to see situations where parents think, uh, getting a flu shot is a bad thing for their children. It is absolutely not a bad thing. Now, what are what are the uh, what are the symptoms that somebody has to look for, and how often are those symptoms going to be the flu? Well, that that's that that's the unique part <laughs> of it. So, uh, having a cold, uh, a cough, uh, having a fever, having the chills, fatigue, but the most important part in coronavirus. Uh, is going to be having breathing problems, significant breathing problems. However, there are some people of the coronavirus that have no symptoms at all, none. And that's an overall, so the, so the numbers that we were just looking at, there are a lot of people who are, have the coronavirus 
that have no symptoms at all. Would, That's the nature of would a they virus. be considered like carriers, almost they, like carriers? They might not even know so they have it. New, it's so new. That's what the scientists are now trying to figure out: whether or not a carrier, whether or not we have carriers, whether or not there are super carriers. What, that what does that mean? A super, super carrier, carrier is somebody who has absolutely no way of knowing, and that no matter where they go, they're infecting people. They're you know they they. They just exude, you know, we've been around people, they tend to perspire a lot, that, you know, they're just folks that, you know, little droplets. Oh my goodness. Right. So, are you comfortable with the, with the uh, basic history of this now, that it began in Wuhan, uh, Ch China? Uh, I've read everything about how bat, it started, from, bat, from the bats to that, the, or the, did the, it happen in, in the, the seafood mar seafood market, a whole bunch of people got sick, and then it spread from there. And that was only at, at the end of the year, the beginning of the year. In other words, this, this has all been going on for about three months. It, it, it actually happened in late in, in 2019. It, it, it actually happened uh, in December. In December. In okay, December. That, that's, still that's still December, know, still January, still. February, right. three, three months. And the Chinese kept it quiet for longer than they needed to, which didn't allow... Is, know, that, is that understandable or not? I mean, at first, do you think it's a local thing that... Uh, or do you think they realized from the beginning this was very dangerous and because it's kind of stupid to keep it quiet. You know, You're eventually going to get caught. This spreads. Different cultures, different forms of government, right. different ways of looking at things, the totalitarian nature of the Chinese. I mean, it, it's different. They but probably not stupid did, people. Oh, by far not. By but, uh, far so, not. So it's one thing to cover up something um, you can keep covered up. It's not the first virus that's come out of China either. Uh, no. In the most recent right. time. Right. So. They've experienced. Any, 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 chance, any chance the theory that this was some kind of weaponized? Uh... Their, their theories are all over the place. The, the British press have done a phenomenal job in this. If you look at the Daily Mail, every day there's a story. About 300 yards away from uh, that marketplace uh, that has been nailed as the uh, ground zero, if you will, um, there is a, a medical facility, there's a science lab, and right. there's always thought that it started there. Um, who knows? And Maybe some gonna, experimental program or? Trip, uh, they're saying it's some experimental program. From my point of view, at this point, where it started and is, you know, I, I've got, at the hospital, we have to deal with real live American right. patients. Right. So that's, you know, I'll let others, you know, epidemiologists try to figure out where it's coming from. Uh, whether or not it's a weaponized product or result or not, it not, doesn't matter. We've got to figure out how to fix it. So what, so. What does that in, what does that entail? By the way, I always thought the same thing when you and I had to deal with West Nile, given the fact that this was something that was from the Middle East and this is something <laughs> that had never been in the Western Hemisphere before. And when we original it was originally thought to be St. Louis encephalitis, and you know, oh, I remember the, that. Yeah. Yeah, right. That was the original thought, and then it became West Nile and stuff. You know. West Nile, it became a big issue. It's like, where did this come from, and how did it get here? Well, when it, it was they when, still we, don't know. when it was first identified, mm -hmm. the CDC gave us a very hard time with it. Mm -hmm. They said it couldn't be West West Nile. Virus. Never been here. Before. And our doctors insisted. Right. Our doctors insisted that that, that it was because they had seen it. They had seen it, and they matched it up with the what what it looked like, and it was, it was exactly there. Now, by the way, that was great work on the part of local doctors at a, at the hospital in Flushing in the New York City Department of Health. That would not have happened. There was a, a, a doctor uh, at Flushing Hospital who had two patients who she could not figure out how they had this yeah, isn't that encephalitis. Amazing? Right. And then she realized, they realized that they had backyards that backed up to each other. They had two different addresses, but their backyards backed up to each other. And once she realized that, she then called Marcy Layton, who worked at the New York City Department of Health, sure. and Marcy, went out to look at this and I'm then realized. because it brings back all I mean, history. Marcy's still there, <laughs> by the way. I brings mean, back she's still there. I, I guess a point that I want to make is, and I hope, we were a Republican administration mm -hmm. in New York City. We had a Republican governor, a Democratic president, and we had a seamless working relationship during West Nile virus. Then once again, of course, during anthrax, but that, that's understandable. But uh, so, so there should be no... There should be no politics in this, not so, discovering it early well, enough. Or, this is, these are the kind of variations that take place in yeah. biology that you're not, you're not going to discover it until there, it happens. There, there's, there's, you know, it, it's just the way Mary LaGuardia said that there's no Republican or Democratic way to pick up the garbage. Yeah, there's, there's no Republican Same, to, to right. cure somebody. Look, I can tell you exactly. That Friday night, it was, it was the Friday of Labor Day weekend. I'll, there are a couple of vivid 
I remember it, 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 it completely interrupted my playing golf that week. Well, it was Friday, and as you remember, Friday, it, it was 4 o'clock in the afternoon. No one was in City Hall because I had it was beginning in Labor Day weekend. I remember. Uh, and um, I remember where Michelle, I was when you called me, but I won't M tell you. Michelle, <laughs> <laughs> Michelle opened the door and said, uh, Commissioner Cohen needs to talk to you. I said, okay, fine. <laughs> uh, he was, a health, as you remember, the health commissioner, and he, I picked up the phone. I said, Neil, everything okay? He said, Joe, we have a problem. And I'll never forget, I said, Neil, come on, it's Friday at 4 o'clock. What are yeah, you talking about? Yeah, he course, went on to describe, happen. he says, you know what encephalitis is? I think so. It's where your brain, he right. said, yeah, 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 yeah. And with that, my door, as you remember the office, my door slammed open. And in came the head of the Office of Emergency Management, gear all prepared. It was Richard. Jerry Hauer. Oh, Jerry, Jerry Hauer, Hauer then. Okay. It was Jerry Hauer, and he was all ready to go. It was yeah. all that. So trying to get understanding everything that happened and eventually going out to Queens Saturday morning when we realized what was right. going on because Friday night was still like we're trying to figure it all out uh, Jake Mangus was my right. chief of staff at the time right and we put together a list of all the elected officials we had been in touch with Claire Co uh, Claire Schulman excuse me she was the borough president, she was of, Queens. Borough, borough president of Queens Democrat uh, local congressmen, uh, local members of the assembly, uh, members of the state senate, uh, uh, at the time was uh, uh, Alan Hevesy's son. Mm -hmm. uh, we made a list of everybody we needed to call, and it's a it's a it's Labor Day weekend, but we made sure that they were informed and everything that was going on. It didn't matter. We, it was a very important thing. It, it requires everybody to come together. Same as with 9/11. 9/11. Well, 9/11. 9/11 had the uh, the force. Right of inducing patriotism and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, but these things you, you kind of have to develop it right. and I was ha I was happy to see that Governor Cuomo and the CDC are working together uh, ho ho hopefully the whether it's a Republican governor or a Democratic governor it's the same working relationship uh, because you need you need that help and the governor the governor praised the you know the selection of uh, Vice President Pence because mm -hmm. he said look this task force does not necessarily need a healthcare expert. It, it needs, needs someone to garner, <laughs> to garner all the, the resources of the of the government. No, it needs somebody who's a, uh, who's, a, who's a governor who knows how who knows how knows how, how to do put it. Put the pieces. So together. Tell, tell me what you're doing. So if I if I come into to, to the hospital mm -hmm. and I have flu-like symptoms, which is probably the best I'd be able to know. I'm probably I probably think I have it. I mean, everybody remember how many people thought they had anthrax? Look, how, we have we have people coming into people? the hospital. Who feel bad or feel sick to their stomach because they just take, oh. they just went to a Chinese yeah, restaurant everybody, and think, they believe they have coronavirus. I think everybody in New York checked into the hospital at least once right. to see if they had anthrax. Right. But um, so then what happens? Uh, so check so first, I come in and, and I foremost, say I have flu-like symptoms. Right. I have coronavirus. Check first off to see if you have a fever. Okay, uh, I do. And then if you have a fever, uh, what your breathing problem is going to be. To do to administer the test now the, the the state has given the city the ability to administer the test that's going to happen uh, later on this week they're putting the that, that the hasn't test started together. yet that has not started yet. I, was gonna, the state, I, I want to ask you about that the a state later, the no state is have. doing the test the state is doing the test the city is in the and I'll explain what they're doing in a second uh, and now the state is working academic medical centers so so NYU and uh, Columbia Presbyterian and Mount Sinai. So what is the test? Is it a blood test? Uh, no, it's a, it's a swab deep in your nose. A, a swab? Up. Okay, they, so they swab your nose. They swab your nose. Send it to the it, lab. Send it to the lab yeah. and it, they're about three to four hours. Uh, well, that's quick. Be. It's relatively quick. It's relatively quick. However, when you needed to send it down to Atlanta to CDC, it takes hours, if not well, that's days. One of those that's that's the problem. C I think CDC made a, uh, an agreement with, with the governor. Right, Wadsworth. They'll do it now, Wadsworth, which is up outside of Albany. But that's still, a, that's still a bit of a right. So you get it there. So it takes it takes a day now. Does it have to get there physically? You, there's no way to transmit this. Uh, it has to get there internet. physically. Yeah, sure. So now they have to okay. send down an assay to, to to examine it. That's in the process. There's some equipment that needs to be. Uh, purchased and it's being purchased right now. We think by Thursday or Friday of this week, you'll be able, as the governor said today, uh, they'll be able, probably in the city, to probably be able to do a thousand a day. Sure. In the city? In the city. So they won't have to be moved up they to They won't have thing. to be moved. But it'll go to one central hospital or place in the Actually, city? Actually, you, you should be able to do it at the public health on First Avenue at, and at the various hospitals. So you get the it. sample, you're, you're about a mile away from there, right? Uh, literally across the street. NYU. Right. Literally so you, across so you the just, you just, we bring it and back. you get it back 
A couple the, hours. Because I remember when we had the anthrax problem, we ran out of laboratory. The laboratories got backed up by two and three weeks. And that's, that could potentially happen here. As and well. you had the terrible problem of somebody thinking they had anthrax, mm -hmm. not knowing whether they had anthrax. Right. You probably had, a, as a precaution, treat them for anthrax, right. but they didn't have anthrax. So here's, here's the most important thing that I can tell you to do. If you think you have the flu, if you think you have coronavirus, don't come to the emergency room. Call your doctor or every hospital in New York, every major hospital in New York has uh, the ability to do digital health care. You can call a doctor and on your iPhone or on your iPad, you can actually talk to a doctor and the doctor can see you and you can go talk back and forth and that doctor will tell you what to do. And if that doctor thinks you need to have a test, he will tell you where to go and what to do, make an appointment, how to get there, so that the, if you really have coronavirus, you don't want to go into a waiting room with 30 other people because you'll infect 30 of them. Or infect. take the subway there, take or a bus take there, the take subway, a cab take there. Take the bus right. there, get into an Uber and infect the Uber That's going to be the natural right. That, but at least of New Yorkers, that's going to be the natural. I would think all over the country, they'll, they'll go to the, 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 the um, impulse will be to go to the emergency room. That, that impulse is the real one, and well, that's, that's the one that we need to change. We need to change it, be able to talk to a doctor remotely, and we live in a digital age. One thing that, that's going to happen from this entire coronavirus is to be able to use our digital products even differently. And you can actually, if you've not used telehealth is, what, is one of the terms that they use, it is fascinating right. to use telehealth. Well, that's, really, that's really very helpful. It can be. It can actually be very, very helpful. That's a good very, practical very suggestion. Right. Uh, so now we're going to take just a short break, and yep. we're going to be back with Joe and go into the, to, to the rest of this. And this has been very, very helpful, Joe. Great. Thank you. For those of you who know me, in addition to law and politics, I'm passionate about the Yankees, baseball, football, all sports to watch, golf to play, history to read, opera, classical music to listen to and watch, and cigars to relax and socialize. And I have definite opinions on the best cigars for the right time and the right place. And you'll hear about that too. But the revolution in cigars took place in the 1990s. Most cigars then were machine made with foreign ingredients. Now it's just the opposite. Most are hecho a mano, man-made. All organic, natural, and premium. The revolution was led by one man and one man alone, Marvin Schenken and Cigar Aficionado Magazine. Marvin had been rating wines quite successfully for Wine Spectator Magazine, and he brought the rating system to cigars. The first cigars rated in the 90s were gone in a flash. Even now, the first thing I do when I get my magazine is I go right to the ratings page. Here it is. Hmm, 93, 91. Oh yeah, I'll go for that one. Then there'll be 94, Whew, 92. Problem is you gotta get there fast, because they go fast. This revolutionized the cigar industry, and quality rose to the top. Then there's the cigar of the year. Try to get them as fast as possible, because they're gone pretty quick. This magazine revolutionized the industry. And I'll tell you what, this month is Cigar of the Year. Cigar of the Year. One of these four is Cigar of the Year. You better get this magazine quick, because these cigars are going to be gone very, very quickly. Go to the link on our website and order it, and you'll be able to get down to your cigar store and get to smoke a few of these, and you let me know which ones you like better, because we can have a really good conversation about it. Sometimes I do agree uh, with Marvin, and when I don't, I let my opinion be known, and Marvin usually says, stick to the law. Also, along with rated cigars, there are articles on politics, sports, interesting profiles, and Marvin also has wine spectator, spirit advocate, if you like wine, if you like scotch, if you like bourbon, if you like rye, if you like vodka, if you like gin, they're the magazines for you. And you know what? 
Subscribe to Cigar Aficionado right now to the link on our website. Welcome back. And we're here with Joe Loda, who is uh, discussing with us this uh, d- uh, terrible uh, situation we have with coronavirus and giving us some very, very good practical advice. The, la- the, the last one being, don't go to the emergency room. Don't necessarily go. You know, modern, modern health care now is about telehealth. You can actually talk to a professional uh, and see them uh, using your iPhone or iPad or any uh, smartphone device. Uh, talk to a doctor. Uh, it's allowable now, um, and you can, you know, the doctor will give you advice as to what to do. And if they determine you should come in, then you come in. And right. Otherwise, you're going to have people potentially with symptoms, quite riding subways, going on buses, mm-hmm. walking the streets, going in stores. The, the best thing to well, do if you have these symptoms is just stay put. Let, let me do a little advertising. I mean, a, a, a hospital and a medical facility uses the telehealth. You can literally... You know, I've seen people use it when they've seen a burn on their hand, mm-hmm. and they'll, I've, I've they'll actually, actually yes. put their hand up to the phone and look at it. Next thing you know, the doctor has ordered a you know a salve to go on, and they you know go to the uh, right. CVS and pick it up, or any you know drugstore, not necessarily that one. So, what what's the prognostication here? What 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 are we going to see happen? I mean, the numbers right now are think, growing so fast. Right that by the time this is on, they're probably going to be double. My hope is, is, uh, numbers are going to go up, but my hope is the American people are going to understand that um, with, uh, you know, it's it's like the flu, you can get it, it's not going to kill you, uh, but just need to take the proper precautions. And if you are prone to respiratory illnesses and if you're immune, uh, if you have a compromised immune system, you've got to take extra precautions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, you know, what, and if you do get it and if you do have it, you need to be prepared to be uh, isolated for up to 14 days, which means you have to stay in your home, you have to stay in your apartment. Uh, and in New York, uh, it's easy because you can get anything yeah, delivered yeah. to your apartment. Uh, but if you live in suburbia or outside, uh, you You're know, you have to uh, make arrangements. You have to make arrangements uh, to do that. You have to have the food delivered. And and is there any medicine you can take to ease the symptoms or make things a little bit uh, more comfortable for yourself? You know, the, uh, typical aspirin, things. Aspirin, I guess. Uh, aspirin, uh, Tylenol, acetaminophen, right. things like that. Yes. Right. But no. Drink water. Drink a lot no, of water. No cure. Uh, there is no specific. Uh, prescription that doctor can write out. So I have this little chart, which again probably will be dated by tomorrow, but this little chart shows what happened with the other pandemics or epidemics, Ebola, uh, SARS, MERS. They uh, were nowhere near these numbers. Uh, I mean, in the case of, um, of MERS, there were only 2,494 cases and 858 deaths, but it was a 34% fatality rate. Fatality rate. rate. And with uh, SARS, there were only 8,000 cases, 774 deaths. I mean, we're 10%. 10 times SARS already in terms of the number of cases. Right. But the 10 times. 10 times. And it's going to grow, remember, because it's similar to the common flu. Uh, the way it transfers from human to human, uh, it's not from an animal to a human, it's not from a, fl- uh, a mosquito to a human. It's human to human, and it's through coughing and through you know the, the particles that we you know come up when we when we but cough. They, but and they only uh, the most that were affected were 29 countries with SARS. Mm-hmm. We're already in 68 countries or more. Right. But the only I mean the only hopeful news out of this is all of those were almost double digit or more than double digit fatality rates. Ebola 41 percent. Right. 40 percent. Uh, this is now it's already down to at the point the chart was done it was three percent right so now it's so down to about I one mean, when you look at when you when you look at the, what, how far it's traveled and why is it traveled i mean you know we talked about this a little bit earlier you know china did not really tell the world what was going on people continued to travel you know there's a lot of business that's done in china especially in in the, in the wuhan area a lot of manufacturing is done there a lot of people travel there a lot of people travel back and a lot of people Rel- travel relatively back. close to beijing right relatively close and of course you got other parts of the world it, it, japan is in, in uh, and pe- people might think it's an, you know it's not beijing so it's population is 11 million people mm-hmm. that, and that's bigger than bigger than new york city and right. almost the size of metropolitan right. metropolitan area of new york. right 
It's a, it's, it's a lot it's of a people. Lar- it's a, there's, well, actually, there's no place in China China's without a lot of people. I know. People. <laughs> I was going to say, China's got a lot of people everywhere. Um, but And then you've got, you know, uh, uh, situations like in Korea. I mean, there's a lot of business that goes on, but what happened in Korea that made it just explode was, as I understand it, there was one of those uh, Unification Church weddings where some yes, like 20,000 right, yes, right, right. uh, folks, 20,000 uh, 20, couples, 40,000 people in, all together were married in a mass wedding where there was hugging and kissing, et cetera, and then all of a sudden there's mass infections going on. Is there anything to indicate that... Um well, I mean, one, one piece of good news that that we have is that the cases in China, for now several weeks, they too. keep they keep going they keep going down. There's right. a downward trend. Right. Does I, that does that mean that the incubator that started this will will produce less, or has well, it spread I, enough now that that doesn't really matter? I think it's spread enough, and I think they're they're all they taking everybody's taking precautions. Right. And we're now in March, and most viruses slow down in warmer weather. I'm hoping for the warmer weather as fast as possible. Most medical professionals all believe that viruses really chill out uh, or slow down in warmer weather. That's why we don't have the flu in the summer Mm -hmm. here. uh, It's down in in the southern hemisphere at that point. I mean, Australia and other places will have to worry about it uh, at that point, the coronavirus. But I think you'll see a slowdown uh, when that happens. Does this come back next year then, if that's the case? I mean, is it... um let, let's, I mean, pro- the, some, yes. some of the others wore themselves out. I don't know of any virus that's worn themselves out other well, than polio because we found well, the vaccine. MERS is still going on. SARS is still going they on. They are. Oh, absolutely. But in small numbers. Very small numbers. And why is that? Why would it be small? How, how, how could it get down to small numbers? People develop immunities to it? P- people have developed immunities to it. People have become uh, aware of it. We don't know yet whether or not there, there have been some medical articles lately about reinfection and coronavirus. Right. So we don't know. You know, some vi- you know the, the whole theory is, you know, you get a shot, uh, you create an antibody. We don't know yet if that is possible with this, uh, with COVID-19, which is the name they've given this, mm-hmm. coronavirus. Not all viruses have that. Uh, shingles, for example, is a virus. Right. Uh, and shingles can reoccur. Even though, you know, some people believe you get it once, like mump, you get it once, you never get it again. In this particular case, we don't know yet. Well, this takes me back to our days when, when we were in City Hall and we were, we were helping to warn people about West Nile virus, about anthrax, about 9-11, and Joe was the best at it. And you can see he's still very good at it. So we're very, very, very lucky to have you in the medical system here in New York. And I thought, I thought uh, right before we end, because we, when I called you up about this, I said, what's the main thing that should, should be done? And you said more information should be given to people about what to look for, symptoms, symptoms. and then what to do. Right. Right? Can't be repeated often enough. It can't enough, be repeated often enough. Which we used to enough. do two or three times a day, right. if you remember. Right. And you often were the guy to I, do it. I, I, but quite honestly, you know, it, it's really important for our elected officials, all of our leaders, to talk about what the symptoms are and what, what it means and what to do. I mean, it's really important. It's not... That, we as humans have all remember, kinds of anxiety. Remember when we sprayed the city and pe- pe- people thought we were going to make them impotent? I, I do remember that. <laughs> I do remember that. I remember a lot of things. There were a cu- couple of communities got really upset. They thought, I, I they thought we were doing it to try to hold down the uh, their shop. birth rate. And, and, and birth I understand rate. that. <laughs> I understand that. And then that the people why. that were afraid of, uh, of we the, thought we of were the gonna, chemical. We were gonna, uh, the, the real chemical, danger, right, the danger was if you put your nose in the in the hose. We put out a lot of warnings ahead of time. I think you warned people you know, not we, to do that one We time. kept warning everybody. Just to, do not put your nose right. in, the, in the hose. We did it at night so most people were asleep and so we would spray. And more importantly, remember the problem was uh, ponding, puddles, uh, making sure ah, that people got the rid second of the year, puddles. The second year we, we attacked those, uh, the larvae. The larvae. Remember, right, we that's attacked. Exactly right. We started in April, or, right. or no, actually uh, in March. Mosquitoes were the enemy. Let's we get rid of the bugs. Bl- blowing away uh, still water. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. So Which I'm, every time I'm I just see, gonna, oh, go ahead. every you time, know, every time I see these ponds growing in different parts of the city, I think of the same thing. Fix that pothole. That thing's going to become infested. But don't you, don't you think that because uh, our doctors, mm-hmm. because I mean we 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 were the beneficiaries that they told us. Because they found West Nile virus so quickly, yeah. and even insisted on it against the advice of CDC, mm-hmm. don't you think that thing was held down dramatically? It it was held down, but I but I've got to tell you, we, it was the first to happen in Queens. Mm-hmm. 
if you followed it every year, no matter where I was, somewhere in the country, especially when USA Today was still around, it used to be, you know, outside of government, traveling for business. Uh, you, I would get USA Today, and inevitably, at some point, they would put a map to show where West Nile was. Every state in the continental United States, all 48 states, at one point had a case of West Nile. Right. And I was right. always amazed that it spread all the way across right. the country. And just before the to, came on the show with you, I actually looked. It's gone all the way up to Alaska, and it's gone down through Central America but and it's South small, America. But in small, containable, not a pandemic. Uh, oh, it's not a pandemic, yeah. but it has spread. Right, I mean, it, right. for something that has never been here before. Yeah, well, it's I very, mean, it's viruses just, are, are uh, it's powerful. What, what, what's so uh, we're just going to review. I have this little chart here that I got from the CDC. We're going to review the key points, which is... What to look for? Fever, Fe cough, sore throat. I forgot about the right. And, and the key one you say difficulty that's a differenti di differentiator is difficulty breathing. Right. But anybody who has any of these things is going to automatically assume they have it. And, but, and you say the best thing to do. Call a doctor. Call the doctor call instead, a doctor of, instead of getting on public transportation. Don't, get, don't, get, don't get into and, a crowded place. Yeah, don't and, get and, in. And, don't and possibly hurt other people. It, it, you know, I'll use the word that they use in cancer. You go into a crowded place, and if you are uh, positive, you're going to infect everybody. You're going to metastasize this problem. Don't right. do that. And now the advice about avoiding it. it says here, avoid contact with sick people, animal markets, wash hands often right. with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. If you feel sick, seek medical care right away right. instead of walking around. Don't travel while you're sick. Yep. And the cover most your mouth when you cough. Cover your mouth when, when you cough. And as I said at the beginning, probably the hardest of all, because I did it three times, I noticed, during this broadcast, don't touch your eyes don't or mouth. Don't touch your eyes and mouth. Don't because uh, people are so all do. just so used to you're used to doing it. Right. And I think if we do you, these things, and don't get a mask. You don't you don't, don't need to wear a, a, a surgical mask. You don't need to do that. People could be doing it for drama too, though. Right. Well, actually, you know, you can go on to Etsy and those places. They'll make one for you with your name on it and stuff like that. It's silly. <laughs> it's absolutely silly. And the hospital is it ready for it? The hospitals in New York hospitals are ready for it. We're, is your hospital as ready for it as it used to have the city ready for everything? We, we are ready for it. We've been prepping. Uh, my, the head of emergency management. At Langone the NYU Atlanta. Medical Center. Right. We're, One of our great hospitals. Right. Uh, put, Ken's name is in the second place, but it's so, NYU uh, Go. If you know Ken, you put his name in the first place. Uh, it's a, I never I forget that, Ken. I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, have, I have to tell you, Joe, it's been really, really interesting. And I think it's a real public service because not only... Do you explain things? You explain them in a way that people can so, access. Invite me back sometime. We'll talk about rats in the good old days. <laughs> Joe was the rat king. Rat czar. The rat, I'm sorry, the yeah. rat czar. And he had a big rat <laughs> right near his office. Right. This man probably has killed more rats than anyone in America. It's a, it, it's, it's a, a, but Joe, I, I, I hate to disillusion you. It didn't win, They're it still didn't there. Yeah, <laughs> big numbers. <laughs> Those guys have been around a long time. <laughs> I remember telling. I remember telling our least favorite newspaper, the New York Times, uh, that if you know, becoming the Red Star, I know exactly what <laughs> Sisyphus felt like. It's a no winning battle at all. <laughs> but, you know, but I have to tell you, people were laughing here. This man was very serious hey, about yeah. his job as you the Red on, Star. What was he that, was very you, serious about everything. Well, you went on. Um, what was it the uh, David Letterman? Mm -hmm. People woke me up. I was asleep. You were on David Letterman, and you announced that. Oh, that we're gonna get rid of the rats. Guys, I went to. I got my MBA with you. You announced my name, and then I was the rat czar. It's like, I, wait. Did I? I didn't call you czar, though, did I? Oh yeah. I, I'm the one who gave you the oh, name czar. Yes. Oh my God, I'm sorry, Joe. <laughs> oh, no, that's mean okay. That. I didn't mean no, to do no, that. Well, it, it's a, I've it's always a, been against it's a the term idea of, of endearment. I mean, I've always been know. against czars because of what happened to the last czar. Hey, that's You're okay. right. Right. I mean, it didn't make it. That's all right. That's so. The other thing is, just like West Nile, and what brings it up is rats are not indigenous to the United States. They were brought here on boats. In other words, they're Ill are they illegal? Were they illegal? That's right. They are. They they were not, it's they a Norwegian rat. It, they came over on a wooden Look boat. That. Look at that. That's amazing. Then they're everywhere. <laughs> they <are> everywhere. <laughs> they're everywhere. Well, I have to tell you that your hospital is in good hands, and the city of New York is in good hands. We've got the best medical people. We do. In the world, I think the people in the city can be confident, and I think people throughout the country can. Mm -hmm. it, se it seems to me that the federal government is doing what it sh should be doing, quick, quickly, and it looks to me like the state and local governments are all right. Understand this is too big 
for any kind of silly bureaucratic or political. As you know, it, it's up to it's up to state and local governments. They're, they're, they're the troops on the ground. They're, they've got to be in the lead. I mean, if I could use an illustration when people would ask me about Katrina and contrast it with September 11th. I said September 11 was a situation in which the city government ran together with the state government. In fact, we ran it together for two months. Unified. We, we, we had staff meetings two, two or three times a day mm -hmm. and uh, ran seamlessly with, with, the, uh, with the federal government. Katrina, we had the mayor fighting with the governor, uh, fighting with the president, and uh, that, I think had, that was the difference. We had a mayor that fled and went to another the, state. I thought, Katrina. yeah. He went to he, Houston. Mayor of New Orleans. Yeah, I remember. He also stayed on a boat a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Anyway. It, well, it in any a, event, we don't event. have that now. We have uh, good coordination and some very good advice from Joe Loda. So right. thanks a lot, Joe. Thanks, Mayor. Appreciate oh, oh, it. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, fist bump. Right. Okay. Oh, thank you, thank Joe. You. We'll be back with you with our next episode. And uh, until then, thank you very much. And listen to Joe Loda's advice. He has some very, <laughs> very good advice. And just don't touch the eyes and the and the mouth, which is the one I'm going to have to work on. Okay. <laughs>